Uh, it's been incredible. Way even better than we could have hoped for. I mean, it's uh, to do a spin-off show is always a risk because you have this huge fandom that you um, that you really want to engage with. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm one of those fans, so you know, I, I, I so all you, all you can really do though is make the best show possible, mm. and really, really try, and uh, then hope for the best. And people have reacted really well. That's been that's been extremely pleasing, and and a relief, but really pleasing. of the universe, which I totally, totally get. I mean, I absolutely get, because we, the last thing I would want as a fan of anything, I mean, I have certain things that I'm huge fans of, but the last thing I'd want is somebody who I thought was maybe an interloper coming in not understanding it, not taking it seriously, so I totally, totally get that. Uh, so I really, when I come in as a fan, and I come in as somebody who wants to respect the universe and just wants to engage with it, look at it in a different pair of eyes, and um, yeah. I've done film script writing. Right. I have a film coming out uh, just after New Year's. Oh, of course, Monster yeah, Calls, yeah. yeah. That's okay. yeah. And, uh, and I don't know, I think um, for me the big job of a writer is to follow the idea wherever it goes without any snobbery. Mm. And that includes for genre, that includes for age group, that includes for medium. Yeah. So if, if an idea is just sparking, you go, great, I'll follow it. And maybe I'll learn some stuff and I'll, you know, I'll follow it wherever it needs to go. I don't think anything like this is interesting unless the person doing it has a strong feeling of what they want to do. You know what I mean? There's no reason to do it. And so uh, they said we were, you know, we're thinking of maybe setting a, um, a spin-off from Cole Hill. And I said, ah, I know exactly how I do that. I would do this, I would do this. Yeah. But at these characters, I explained to them my philosophy of, of agency, of point of view. I explained to them. Um, why I thought these particular characters were important. I said, this is how it started, this is how it ended. So, and they said, great, it's essentially. <laughs> I mean, it's more than that, you talk about it, but uh, I don't know, I kinda, I didn't wait to be given anything. And I, I, don't, think, I don't think that's a fruitful way to do any project. You, you want somebody to be really active, and really wanting to do something, um, rather than saying, oh, what can I get, it? Well, what, what can I do? What, you know, what are my limitations? You know, no, you want to be somebody to come in bold and excited. Oh no, not yet. <laughs> not yet. I, I, knew, I knew how I would end it. I knew. Uh, yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. I'm thinking. Yeah. 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 No, there's there's lots more to come. There's lots yeah. of. We got some really cool way out there episodes are on the way, and uh, and then there's an overarching story as well as the individual shows. Yeah. So yeah, there's lots more to come. Ah uh, well, you know, I mean, I I totally get binge watching. But the problem I was with binge watching is um, everybody talks about that show for a week, mm -hmm. and then eventually you sort of when, when like if I get if I'm late to something, yeah. it's like there's nobody to talk about it with. So I mean I really get it. I think it, I think it absolutely has a place, but it, it has pluses and minuses. And I yeah. I love just to be able to talk about a show. Did you see that episode? I wonder what's going to happen next. So pluses and minuses. There's no there's no right answer to that, but uh, I kind of like discussing the episodes as they come. Well, um, I mean, the, the magic sort of combination is kind of the Buffy combination. Yeah. There's something really funny, really scary, really emotional, funny, scary, emotional, emotional, funny. And that, if you can turn it on a dime, it's a hard thing to achieve. But I would say you should always shoot the moon, shoot for the moon, because yeah. you might not hit the moon, but you might get something interesting on the way. So it's, a, it's a, a real serious tenet of my writing for young people is that you have to be honest about the difficult stuff. Because this is what teenagers think about. If you, yeah. if you read anything a teenager writes, their fiction, yeah. it's much harsher and harder and more violent and more extreme than anything I would ever get away with writing. Yeah. And I think that's not a problem. I think that's the age where you push at those boundaries. But in writing for teenagers, I think if you avoid engaging with that, then you're kind of abandoning a teenager to face it themselves. So the gore and the, some of the other issues to me, that's just taking seriously what a teenager is already thinking and saying, okay, yeah. I acknowledge that this is something you're thinking, so let's respect that yeah. and let's talk about it. Yeah. Coyness, coyness turned me off instantly as a teenager. I could tell in a second if somebody was coddling me or babying me or <laughs> thinking that I was unable to talk about something and that yeah. really made me angry and I wouldn't watch and therefore I would miss whatever discussion anybody 
wanted to have about the things that I cared about. So to me, it's really about a, taking the teenage viewer seriously. Uh, it's kind of, it is stuff that I bring to all of my fiction for teenagers, which is a, a seriousness of purpose. Teenagers take what they feel quite seriously, so there's a kind of uh, uncynical sincerity, that's a tautology, but uh, uh, which I think is kind of refreshing. If you can, if you can do it unstupidly, that's probably a better way to put it, an unstupid yeah. sincerity. You know, they take their feelings seriously, and why shouldn't they, why shouldn't we? Why do we grow up and start to dismiss what we feel? Yeah. And so they don't like to be indulged. Taken seriously is different than indulged. And but if you can do that, yeah. like with Buffy, like with all the great YA shows, like My So Called Life and so on and so on, uh, if you respect them, they are very, very willing to follow you to far off places. Yeah. And what a f what freedom for a storyteller! What freedom if you want to bleed genres together? <laughs> what freedom if you want to try something yeah. really different? And it's a great experience. That's, that's the paradox of YA. If you get it right, if you get any story right, it, it's universal. Yeah. So you, you can't cheat. You can't be really for adults while pretending to be for teens. And that's, I think that's very, very important. But if you hit the target correctly, if you say, I am taking this story seriously, and this story is earning its place in every particular, if this is a story I cannot wait to tell, then the paradox is by doing that, that's when other people come to it. That's why, that's why why it sells in the millions. It's lots and lots of adults who want a good narrative with some emotional sincerity and love and pain taken seriously. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you, you gotta aim for a teenager, but like I said, the paradox is if you do that, that's when you hit other people. Uh, I couldn't possibly answer, uh, <laughs> but uh, I, right now what I'm concentrating on is getting, making class stand on its own to be a show that you come to see regardless of whether you're a Who fan or not. That's, nope. that's what I would aim at.